when Nirvana came along and just blew all the doors open for everybody. Next up is Green Day and The Offspring and all that, and so everyone's thinking the same thing for us. I had just put out a record by The Offspring that uh, it was just selling millions of records, and, and Epitaph was a tiny indie at the time. It was me and five other people. Brett and I were working at Epitaph, so Epitaph's growing through the roof. It's just, you know, the, every band is starting to sell big numbers, and punk rock is now huge. Everything was getting so intense that I just, there was no way in the world I was able, to, I was going to be able to do Bad Religion and Epitaph at the same time. Uh, Bad Religion is taking up all of our time. It used to just be more of a three month a year kind of hobby-ish thing, and now Greg says, I'm not gonna go back to school. I wanna tour more with the band uh, and spend more time dedicated to the band. But that's not going to work at Epitaph with Brett because he needs to spend more time with the label. There's no way that I could just abandon Epitaph at this moment because it was just exploding at the seams. And I'm kind of torn between the middle saying, well, okay, I'm either going to answer phones or I'm going to play the bass guitar. I'm playing the bass guitar. And I thought the lesser of two evils was to leave Bad Religion because I thought they would, would uh, be able to go on without me. And it turned out, of course, they were able to. Hey, Brett made the right decision uh, because he had to take care of his company. I, I really believe that. Um, and when he left, it was, it, it was huge. And I called Greg and I said, you know, I, Brett's leaving. When Brett left the band, it was a frightening moment. I wasn't able to really understand the impact that it was gonna have. I believe that somehow we could overcome the drawbacks of losing Brett by maybe uh, elevating our um, commercial publicity and just trying to paint a lighter picture of the band and where it came from as opposed to the real substance of the band, which is its songwriting. Uh, in a sense, I really believed all these things could overcome the uh, shortcomings of losing Brett. Plus, I was pissed that he left. I mean, plain and simple, there was just a, you know, it's like, if someone just says, I'm bailing, and you're a partnership, you, you, you get angry. I never acted out the anger towards Brett, because I thought that would be juvenile and futile. Mm -hmm. He made a decision, and uh, I had to live with it. Some of my anger I put into uh, just moving forward with the band, making, maybe it's what saved the band, tried to make the band just as good without him. Well, that didn't happen. But in a sense, the band bridged a very treacherous gap, and that is the gap of Brett's absence. And we wouldn't have bridged that gap, I don't think, if I didn't have that drive. So wherever it came from, it ended up being a good thing. We had varying degrees of success through those years. Overall, those were the the kind of the dark ages of bad religion. In 93, about a year before I joined, I was uh, dating a woman who worked at Epitaph. It was 92. And I got a pre-release of the Recipe for Hate cassette. And this cassette was just changed my life. It was stuck in my, literally stuck in the tape deck in my car, couldn't come out. And I listened to it constantly and said, you know, if I had made better choices musically in my life, I could be in a band that good. Because I was friends with this lady at Epitaph, I had occasion to hang out with Brett and Greg Hetson. Well, when I was with Greg Hetson, I would always say, you know, if Brett ever leaves, call me first. The next day, I would say the same thing to Brett. If you ever get rid of Hetson, give me a call. I mean, I was just trying to cover all the bases, but it was just fantasy land, because no one was going anywhere, until I got a phone call in 1994 from Greg Hetson saying, uh, do you want to be in the band because uh, Brett left? And it was just, it was unbelievable. And I said yes immediately, um, because it was something I wanted to be part of so badly. We knew that uh, if, you know, Brett leaving was a big blow to the band, so we had to replace him with someone of very high status. And Brian was uh, a friend of the band's, so we thought, well, can't hurt to ask. Yeah. And he was living in L.A., and he was excited, so... Uh, you know, we got along great, and uh, he was the perfect replacement. I think getting Brian uh, was probably the right choice because Brian came in with his own credentials. It wasn't like trying to 
get a Brett alike. Let's get someone like Brett. I was like, no, we just got this other guy who came in from the East Coast and had his own history. Because you can't really replace a songwriter like Brett. That's just not something you can do. And I think that's something that we've always kind of thought about is if somebody leaves, uh, it's an opportunity to go and find uh, the best person you can find, like Brooks Wackerman, right? When he came into the band, it's like, OK, I've never even seen anybody like you. You're insane. How I joined Bad Religion was through uh, mutual friends in the industry. And um, after I quit my old band, uh, about four or five people recommended me uh, to Brett Gerwitz. So he called me up, uh, gave me a list of songs to learn, and um, I went down there and auditioned and uh, felt natural. So here I am at the Palladium. He is the sickest drummer I've ever played with. He's just a mad, gifted musician. I come from a very musical family. My uh, dad's a music teacher, so as soon as I started walking, he, he put me on the drum throne and started teaching me beats and rudiments. I love the fact that uh, Brooks is very interested in learning. And I think you know, we get along so well because our parents are all our educators. When I was about six years old, he uh, took me to the teachers that he took from. Um, a jazz teacher and a classical teacher, so I took lessons for about seven years. As he's been in the band longer, and we've kind of all started to realize we're all relatively decent people, he's really become an, an unbelievably great guy. And uh, I, I really like him. Brooks, very dry sense of humor. Very, very funny guy. I just hate when drummers have always have to warm up on their little practice pads, very annoying. Brooks is the best drummer I've ever played with, and he is a uh, genuinely thoughtful and gentle guy. He has uh, the most complete lack of pretension and hostility from a, from a native Californian that I've ever seen. I really don't hate anything about Brooks. Is it possible I might not ever come upon something I hate about him? Just watch it. I'm watching you, Brooks. <laughs>